Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is still Carsten Hexer, and uh, I'm here with a fantastic guest in this group. His name is David Gardner. We just had a fantastic conversation about investing in startups. Very, very insightful. And uh, it took us a little bit longer, but the answers that we got from you, David, were were absolutely excellent. And it was it was fantastic to to speak with someone who is really putting money on the table and investing in startups. Not all these people who have a theoretical knowledge, but someone who is really, really doing it. But what a lot of people don't know, I mean, you are you're not only one of the founders of Motley Fool, one of the big financial service companies in the United States with 400 employees, but you are also on the board of directors of something that is called Conscious Capitalism. And now Conscious Capitalism, I, I, I think a lot of people don't know what it is. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Can you tell us a little bit more what conscious capitalism is and why are you on the board? Why is it important to you? Well, um, it is it is very important to me, Karsten. Thank you for your time today. And it's my pleasure to discuss this topic. It's near and dear to my heart. So I think that capitalism is a wonderful force when done properly, when done well. Yeah. We all know some yes. bad companies, some bad examples of, of yep. crony capitalism, abusive capitalism. It's not always a successful model. But when it's yep. done well by good people, there are few things in the world that elevate humanity um, from, from poverty and give people more possibilities and reward investors and make customers yes. happy and have employees who love to work at those companies. The companies that do conscious capitalism well create value for everybody who's a stakeholder. And so I especially know this because I'm an investor and I pick stocks and I select companies and people for our business, they pay me uh, a subscription fee for my ideas. And so when I pick stocks, it matters a lot because they're gonna buy what I'm saying. And so I, I need to be picking winning companies. And over 25 years now, what I've learned is that the companies that do conscious capitalism well, are usually the best long-term investments that we can make together as invest. So, so people pay me for my good advice, and all I'm doing is I'm looking to see who does capitalism well, and it works. Now, I mean, this is it's it's an interesting um, wording, conscious capitalism. I mean, capitalism, everybody knows that. Uh, well, more or less, uh, I had a lot of interesting conversations about capitalism, but now we have conscious capitalism. And you said it's it's important, especially when you invest in companies, that they do conscious capitalism. So what does it mean? What does conscious capitalism mean? What what is what is different uh, with a conscious company or a company with a purpose then from another company i mean every every company has a purpose at least they want to make money right or is there a different approach what what is what is your take on that yeah well i think that there are there are a few important differences between conscious capitalism and traditional capitalism um the two that i'm going to highlight right now are first of all companies okay. that really are purpose driven not just making money, okay. they are driven to do something important in the world. And they, as it turns out, often make more profit than the companies that are just trying to make profit. So it, okay. it, in the same way, maybe this is a bad analogy, but if you've ever heard people say, you know, how do I become happy in life? I mean, if you just try to yep. be happy, you're probably not going to be very happy. If you just try to make money, you're probably not going to make that much money. If instead you do something yes. important in the world that you love, that makes you happy. And if you try to do something important in the world for a business, that will make you more money. So in my experience, it's the purpose-driven nature of the best companies that really leads to great prosperity. And then point number two, great prosperity for everybody. Because another big difference between conscious capitalism and maybe traditional capitalism is that conscious capitalism, the conscious part is that you're intentionally, consciously trying to create value for all of the stakeholders. Now, at least here in the United States of America in the 20th century, often you would learn if you went to business school or read the letter of the big companies like 
like Deutsche Bank or Deutsche Telekom, like the big companies in Germany or the IBM, the big companies in the U.S., they would say the purpose of the corporation is to maximize shareholder value. It is for the shareholders. That's why corporations exist, and we're going to maximize their value. But the problem yep. with that is that there are many other stakeholders. There are your customers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope you're trying to maximize their value. There are your employees who deliver your product and service. You want to have them love their job and enjoy coming to work. You also have partners and suppliers, and they want to be well-treated, well-respected. They want to be up in the front window of your retail store, right? They want to get good pricing from you and be you be a consistent partner and supplier. Yeah. Also shareholders, they want to make money too. So it's not just about one of those groups. We're not going to say we just maximize it for them. That's a broken model. But that is traditionally how capitalism has been thought of. So conscious capitalism, I hope this answer wasn't too long. Conscious capitalism is about consciously thinking about all of the stakeholders and creating wins for everybody. Now, it, 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 your answer was not too long because I think this is it's it's absolutely important to talk about that because it 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 gives the indication of a completely different mindset. I mean, if you only have to think about one group, like the shareholders, and you maximize their value, uh, this is a different approach than if you if you think uh, we call it like a holistic approach. You think about everybody. You think you said it. You think about the employees. You think about your customers. You think about your business partners. You think about everybody, and and you try to maximize the value for all of them. So this is this is something completely different. Now, the the, the interesting thing about conscious capitalism is it's it's not something new. It not just happened one year ago, but it happened several years ago. So and and I understood from we we did the video before where we talked about investing, and you spoke a lot about. The humans, the people that are the founders and the people who are the investors. So, and now when it comes to conscious capitalism, again we have all these human parts, all these people that that come together. Now, when it comes to conscious capitalism, there is, of course, there are a lot of conferences where people can meet, and we have in September we have our conference in Europe. Now you have a lot of experience with conscious capitalism. Now my question to you, and of course, to, I think it's it's a question that everybody has who hears about this conference. Um, why should someone go to one of these conferences? I I remember I met Raj Raj Ray Ray. Uh, I met him in Mexico. Rush, yes, uh, yeah. Sorry for for pronouncing his name uh, incorrectly. Um, I I met him in Monterey, and I was fascinated about what he what he had to say. But now I heard him. A lot of people have not heard him. Why should they go to one of these conferences? What what will they experience? Well, at least for me, I first went to a conference in the United States for conscious capitalism ten years ago, and my eyes opened those three days in Austin, Texas, what I realized was a lot of my intuition um, that I had felt about how business should be done well or which companies I recommend, it became, rather than just intuition, it became intention, right? So your intuition okay. starts to become more intentional and you start to realize how to do your business better or for me, how to pick better stocks. The people that I yep. met at that conference are some of the best people in the world, not just in business, some of the best, most valuable people in the world. And for yep. me, over now 10 years, I've gone every year since, just about, and um, John Mackey, who's the founder of Whole Foods, which is a big grocery store yep. that Amazon bought out um, a year or two ago here in the United States, Whole Foods, John Mackey was the one who started that conference, and five or six years ago, he joined our board of directors. So that's an example of how important going to the conference was for me. We actually met people, started relationships, and with amazing people who have since come to add value personally to my business, but not just my business, to my life. And so I think that what you're going to find, and I hope whoever is watching right now will think about coming and joining with Conscious Capitalism Europe in September, I think at the end of that conference, you'll look back and say, I'm glad that I went because I saw some new ideas about how to do my business better. And I met people that could be great friends and allies 
for me personally and for my business in the future. And again, these to me are some of the best people that I know. So, and if now it's, you, you spoke about purpose, you spoke about uh, creating value, not only for the shareholders, but for everyone. Now, I know there are four pillars of conscious capitalism, and we don't want to elaborate on these four pillars because this would take us another, another hour. But um, my, my question is, if, if someone who has never heard about conscious capitalism before and maybe watched, is watching this video now and, and thinks, okay, conscious capitalism, this is, this is really interesting. Where should he start? Where should, he, where should he go to? Are there are there people that you would recommend that you should speak to or websites or I mean, of course, he should go to the conference because there he will meet, especially the people from Europe who try to 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 drive conscious capitalism and bring this idea forward. But what what can an individual do to get more information or to 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 strengthen this idea in his business? So I think there are two things that you can do. First of all, anybody can just Google conscious capitalism and you can find the website. Uh, and this is what I'm on the board of directors of. And you can read a lot more about what it is, the four pillars that you mentioned. We've already talked about a couple of them in this discussion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but you can, so you can read more about it. And you can also see some case studies and stories of companies and how they do their business differently and why they're so successful. Yeah much more successful often than the companies they compete against in their industries. So number one, you can Google it and read a lot more about it. And then number two, yep. uh, there's a wonderful book called Conscious Capitalism. It was written by John Mackey, who I just mentioned, the founder of Whole Foods, and Raj Sisodia, who you just mentioned that you met in Mexico. So they are the yes. co-authors of this book. And so anybody who wants to read more can understand it. But if, you, if you're too lazy to read a book or – you are, uh, it's, 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 uh, you, you don't have internet connection and you can't Google, then you definitely should just come to the conference <laughs> because you will have, especially what I love about the conferences is you get to meet other entrepreneurs who present what they do and how they do and what they've learned. Yeah. So you're seeing real life examples that you can learn from. And usually by year two or three, if you keep going to the conferences, they'll start to ask you to tell your story of your business, right? So it's really entrepreneurs sharing with each other, and it's very powerful. And I think a conference is always a, a good place because the people who go to the conference are interested, of course, in the topic of the conference. And when the topic is conscious capitalism, then, of course, they are interested. Maybe they don't know exactly what to expect, but they will find all the answers there. And you have someone that you can talk to about this, this topic. Um, yes. Regarding conscious conscious capitalism, from from all the experience that you have, is there some some last piece of advice or some 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 story, one story that you that you want to share uh, about conscious uh, capitalism that that is important to you? I mean, you you uh, heard about this uh, ten years ago, what you said, yeah. and since then you went to to every conference. Metal. Is there is there something something that you can share at the end of this this video for for our viewers? Yes, I'll just say in my own case, ten years ago before before we found conscious capitalism, if you had come to my company and interviewed my employees and said, "What is the mission of this company? What is the purpose of the Motley Fool?" Yeah, back then we would have had about two hundred employees, and I think you would have gotten about. 75 different answers. Okay. <laughs> we went to the conference and we started thinking about the importance of purpose and aligning an entire organization, not just your employees, all of your stakeholders around a purpose statement. And we did it and we changed who we were. And today, if you ask our 400 employees, what is the purpose of the Motley Fool? Every one of them can tell you. And that is such a powerful difference in our business and an understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. Why are we called the Motley Fool? Who are we serving? What makes us different? We have a great sense of self today that we did not have before conscious capitalism. And I think this is a, a very, very, very important point because 
even here in Germany, everybody is thinking about the vision, about the purpose of a business. What, what are we really doing? But, but then it stops. Then the conversation is not going on. Then, you know, the business comes in your way and you have to meet your next customer and you have to make the next sale and everything. And people are not really thinking about it. And I think this is what you can do at such a conference. You, can, you really have the time to think and you get the experiences and you get the, the, the examples from other entrepreneurs and they can help you on your journey. And I think this is so important when you want to find out why, what is the purpose of your business? And this is, uh, I think this is a very, very good um, final, final uh, uh, quote from you on, on that topic. Thank you. Well, it, I, again, I, I said it in the last video, I want to say it again. Thank you very, very much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you. And uh, maybe I see you on one of the next Conscious Capitalism conferences. I hope I can go to uh, the United States next year. And uh, maybe we can welcome you in another year in uh, Europe. Thank you very, very much. It was an absolute you, pleasure. Christian. I really enjoyed it and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful afternoon and a nice rest of the week. Thanks.